Thank you. Our life is governed by random events. It's an incredible series of coincidences that led us here today. Had it not been for this asteroid randomly hitting our planet some 66 million years ago and making life really miserable for the dinosaurs, human beings would just not exist. Maybe your great-grandmother and your great-grandfather met by some crazy coincidence, otherwise you wouldn't be here. And perhaps you just met somebody purely by chance who convinced you to come here today and listen to this talk. But from a scientific point of view, this incredible power of randomness in our life is actually strange, because science is actually the opposite. Science is very good at predicting the future. We can predict the products of chemical reactions. We can calculate the stopping distance of your car on a wet road. We can calculate the future positions of asteroids and planets with incredible accuracy. So, does this mean that more and more science will lead to better and better predictions? If there is a cause for every effect, and if the universe is basically governed by immutable laws of nature, does this mean that in some sense the future is already set in stone? Is randomness just an illusion? Do random events just appear random to us because we are not clever enough to see what's causing them? Well, this used to be quite a popular view among scientists, and the French philosopher Pierre Simon Laplace illustrated that in a famous thought experiment called Laplace's Demon. Imagine, Laplace said, a super-intelligent being with infinite intelligence and the power to solve the most complex mathematical equations in an instant. And let us assume that this super-intelligent demon knows everything there is to know about the physical world. Every position and velocity of every particle, rock and planet in the whole universe, as well as the mathematical laws governing their motion. For such a demon, Laplace argued, the future would just be as obvious as the present, because every future event, however distant, must follow unambiguously from what is happening today. So, in this worldview, the future is deterministic, there is no room for randomness, and the fate of the universe has already been determined at the moment of the Big Bang, and since then the universe is just following the laws of cause and effect, much like the gear of clock predictably ticking away once it has been set in motion. Well, this is a quite compelling idea, but modern physics tells us that things are not quite as easy. Modern physics says that actually the future cannot be predicted, that randomness and unpredictability are very, very real. But how can this be? How can the laws of nature allow that? Well, it was quantum physics which brought a completely new kind of randomness into science. Because quantum physics basically said, says that some things cannot be predicted, that some things do not really have a cause. Uh, take a, a radioactive atom, for instance. We know for sure that at some point it is going to decay. We know its half-life, we can calculate the probability that it's still going to be here tomorrow. If we have a billion of those atoms, we can calculate with great accuracy how many of them will still be around next Saturday. But if you're interested in the fate of one particular atom, if you want to know when this one particular atom is going to decay, there is just no way to tell. Even if you know everything there is to know about this atom, even if you measure it perfectly, you cannot predict its future. You could say that nature itself does not know what's going to happen. It just decays at some point, can be now, can be in a billion years. It's, it's just random. And this is true for many quantum effects. Quantum theory tells us the probability of possible outcomes, but it does not necessarily tell us what is going to happen in one particular instant. So, if you're confused by that, don't worry, you're in good company. When this weird quantum randomness was discovered, some of the world's brightest minds were absolutely not happy with that. Uh, Albert Einstein was one of those who said it's impossible that real randomness is built into the fundamental laws of nature, but he was wrong. God does not play dice, Einstein famously said. His colleague Niels Bohr answered, well, Einstein stopped telling God what to do. But maybe, you could argue, 
maybe this is not so bad. Maybe this weird quantum randomness just affects small stuff, such as atoms and molecules. And maybe on a larger scale, the universe is still predictable, uh, if we forget about those, this, this microscopic stuff, which doesn't matter anyway. But unfortunately, it does not work like that. You cannot draw a line between the weirdly random quantum world of small things and the world of larger things which, which behave orderly and predictably. As it turns out, pretty much everything in the universe is random. And in order to understand that, we have to think about a second important theory which completely smashed the idea of predictability, and that is chaos theory. Chaos theory basically tells us how bad it is to make small mistakes. So usually we're used to the idea that uh, a small error will not completely change the outcome. Yeah? If, you, if you cook spaghetti and you use a tiny little bit too much salt, it will not change the end result into pork chops. And if you, if you launch an interplanetary spacecraft and the, the speed is just a tiny little bit higher than it should be, then it will probably still head towards the right planet. So we're used to that idea that, that small errors are not so bad, that pretty good knowledge about something at least gives us a pretty good idea of what's going to happen next. But as it turns out, this is not true. In fact, even almost perfect knowledge about something may be too little, uh, for long-term predictions, and a wonderful example of that is the weather. We can have highly sophisticated computer simulations calculating a weather forecast, and probably the predictions for tomorrow will be quite good, but nobody in the world can calculate where it's going to rain in two years. It's just fundamentally not possible, and it never will be. So imagine you have an almost perfect computer simulation of the weather on the whole globe. But there is one small butterfly sitting somewhere, flapping its wings and twirling around a few molecules in the air. And even if your computer simulation may otherwise be perfect, you did not include this one butterfly. Then this tiny error, this one butterfly flapping its wings, may be enough to render your long-term predictions completely useless. So imagine you could make a perfect copy of the whole universe at some point in time. And uh, the only difference between the two copies is that in, in the original universe, the butterfly flaps its wings, whereas in the copy, it decides to just sit there doing nothing. And of course, at the beginning, this tiny difference between those two universes would hardly be visible, and the, the weather on the two copies of planet Earth will develop in a very, very similar way. But this tiny little difference, it will grow exponentially in time, it will become huge, and at some point you might find yourself in a terrible hurricane in one universe, whereas the copy of you in the other universe would just experience a pleasant little breeze. So this tiny error, this tiny difference is amplified and leads to two completely different outcomes. That's the butterfly effect, this is the core of chaos theory. And this, of course, destroys the idea of the universe being predictable. So basically, quantum theory says that small things can happen unpredictably without a real cause, and chaos theory says that small things can have huge consequences. And at least in combination, this is the end for Laplace's demon being able to predict the future. So even on the level of basic fundamental physics, the future cannot be predicted. And of course, there are many other levels at which randomness enters our lives. Biology, for instance. The DNA of two parents is, is randomly jumbled up, creating a new living being. Uh, also, our health is influenced by random events. Of course, we can increase our chances by, by eating healthy food, by doing some exercise, by trying to stay away from harmful stuff. But in the end, in order to stay healthy, we need to be lucky. There can be some random quantum effects breaking up DNA molecules, which can eventually lead to, lead to cancer, so something completely random can have very dramatic effects. And in spite of all that, even though we are faced with random events every day, we, as human beings, are remarkably bad at dealing with the concept of randomness. We are clinging to the illusion that everything can be controlled and predicted. We are forced to see the universe in terms of cause and effect, and we find connections even if there are none. Somebody sees a black cat, and then later that day he loses his wallet. 
Of course, there is no logical connection between those two things. It's just a random coincidence. But our mind is always trying to construct theories and telling stories. And, and that way, a random coincidence can turn into a widely believed superstition. A sock randomly worn by a football play player during a great match may suddenly turn into an indispensable lucky charm which has to be worn in every game from now on. A healing crystal is given to a patient who coincidentally gets better, and then this, this healing crystal is considered to be a miracle cure. Somebody performs a ritual to make it rain, and when the rain finally comes, and statistically at some point it has to, then this ritual is considered to be highly effective and passed on for generations. This does not happen because people are stupid. This happens because it's human nature. This was demonstrated in a very nice experiment by the Japanese researcher Koichi Ono. He prepared a room with an electronic scoreboard and several levers. And people were asked to increase the score, but they were not told how to do so. So they just randomly pulled some levers, and sometimes they would gain points. And so everybody would, would, would say, well, OK, I've figured out how to do that. Maybe I have to pull this lever three times, or I have to pull all of them in the right order. And the fact was that nothing those people did had any influence on the score whatsoever. The score was just increased automatically due, according to some predefined random pattern. But everybody in there thought they had understood how the system works and they were responsible for what's happening and they had made the system predictable. Well, they had not, but probably every one of us would have made the same mistake because we just like to tell ourselves that we know what's going to happen, just like Laplace's demon, even <laughs> if this is just not possible. And this is also the reason why we have a completely distorted view of success and failure. We see somebody with an impressive career and we say, wow, he must be great at making all the right decisions. We meet somebody who's rich and we say, wow, she must be incredibly intelligent. We see somebody give a TED talk and say, well, this must be a really interesting person. <laughs> well, the fact is, no, <laughs> it's just not true. Quite often, success just comes down to dumb luck. Uh, so uh, whether or not we are successful is, is something that, that quite often we just cannot influence. Of course, it's, it's good to be intelligent. It's good to work hard. If you play your cards right, you increase your chances but it doesn't influence which cards you're being dealt purely by coincidence. Maybe the rich guy you admire was just randomly born into a rich family. Maybe he had a weird business idea, which was actually stupid, but miraculously, in this case, it worked out. And maybe the badly dressed fellow sitting next to you on the bus is actually a genius and could have been the next Silicon Valley superstar, but for some completely random reason, his company tanked and he lost it all. So the difference between a glorious victory and a devastating defeat may just be a little bit of luck. Perhaps being at the right place at the right time, or having overheard some random bit of information, or perhaps even a quantum particle doing something utterly unpredictable. But we don't want to believe that. We want to plan the future, and that's why we go to seminars, and, and we buy books written by successful people on how to be successful, and there we are faced with incredible wisdom, such as always try to be yourself, and always try hard, and have a positive attitude. Well, that's nice, <laughs> but, but that's not a recipe for success. It's a collection of trivialities. And if you, if you stick to these rules, of course, you may be successful, but just as well, you may not. It's, it's a random coincidence. Just deal with it. And if you do get rich, well, it's great, but it doesn't mean that you are infallible in everything you do now. And by the way, it does not mean that you necessarily should go into politics and bestow your wisdom into the world. No, uh, life is a game of chance. We don't know what's going to happen, and quite often we don't have too much control over it from the motion of tiny particles to the fate of nations, the future can neither be planned nor predicted. That's just a scientific fact. And I don't think that this is a thought that should scare us, quite the opposite. Acknowledging the incredible power of randomness in our life can make us happier. The universe is not just 
a huge clockwork that we can tweak in order to make it tick the way we want. And once we understand that, we can stop trying so hard. Accepting and even celebrating the incredible power of random events can make us more modest in success and more gracious in defeat. When things go well, that's wonderful, but let's not get carried away and try to be the next Superman. And if things are bad, well, maybe we shouldn't be so hard on ourselves. Let's cut ourselves some slack. Maybe it was just bad luck. Perhaps it was just the wrong butterfly flapping its wings. We will never know. We can never know. And that's a good thing. <laughs>